Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks so much for coming back. And today we've got Mizar on the call. Mizar is one of those coaches where I'm really interested to talk about some of the outside experiences that he has and currently has, um, because I think they make him really unique in how he approaches, let's not even call it coaching fitness. It's just the philosophy of fitness. So I think we're going to have really good a conversation around this. But Mazar, what I've been asking a lot of our coaches when we start is, how do you really approach helping your clients and athletes improve? You know, for me, the basic thing is um, understanding them. You know, understanding them in the sense of where are they coming from? What have they done? And where do they want to go? You know, sometimes I think that's where the message is very unclear, you know, and we don't take time to formulate a plan based on the individual. You know, if the person has done, you know, soccer for 10 years, you know, where, where do we take them from there, you know? And what's their actual lifestyle, you know? Are they coaching eight hours? You know, are they spending 12 hours in front of the computer? You know, are they running around all day? And, you know, I think that's where the key is, you know, to allow them to have like a sustainable lifestyle, you know, and building up from small success. You know, if at the beginning it means, you know, going to bed earlier, realizing that, you know, we're not recovering well, realizing that, you know, we're hungry or not, we're full or thirsty, you know, uh, like James used to say, the happy, hungry, horny, you know, the foundation, the BLGs. You know, and that's where I think the beauty of this process uh, starts, you know. So let me let me start with this uh, non-intelligent question. But uh, where are you actually from? So, you know, you can hear the accent. And just for people who haven't met you before, where are you from and what's the accent? It's a mixture of everything. I'm like a <laughs> global human being, if you ask me. Um, I was born in Mexico City. I lived there until I was seven years old. Uh, we moved to Rimouski. Rimouski is a small town near Quebec, uh, only French speaking. And uh, imagine family of Mexicans arriving there. Uh, my dad wanted to study, so he finished his studies. And then we move again to Halifax. Halifax is another province in, in uh, Nova Scotia. And uh, that's where I studied. Uh, I did my university and uh, I loved Montreal. Well, now I'm located in Montreal. This is where I've been uh, coaching. This is where I have a gym. And um, this is where I plan to continue developing. You know? Gotcha. That's awesome. So when you say that you are really trying to understand somebody, could you, could you break that down a little bit for me? And let me try to give you some context. Um, if somebody comes in and they say, um, I want to improve my fitness. How would you even have the first conversation with them? And I know that that's, that's a deep question, so let's just stay a little bit on the surface, but where would you start the conversation to try and understand them better? Right there. I would like to know their definition of fitness. You know, what's your definition of fitness? What's your definition of health? What's your definition of well-being? What's your definition of longevity? And you know, where we're in that spectrum. You know, if we talk about fitness, if we talk about performance, let's define the sport that we want to play. You know, if it's CrossFit, you know, if it's a female, if it's a male, if it's a master, you know, where are we, what are the standards we're trying to make? You know, if I want to go to the games and I can't do a muscle up, you know, I hope you have a couple of years in front of you. You know, if it's just a question of competing, you know, as a weekend warrior, what level is it scale? You know, what kind of scale version? I've seen competitions where scale versions, the guys are doing, you know, 30, 50 butterfly pull-ups, squat snatch 245 and your scale. You know? <laughs> yeah, there was a time in, uh, in 2011, if I was competing in scale, it would have been a little bit different than 2019. That's for sure. Yeah. So um, if you, it, it's, it's really clear that you want to get sort of this all-encompassing picture of the person. Why do you believe that asking those questions and let's just say around the definitions they have for fitness, for health, for competition, et cetera, why are those so important up front to ask? Because that defines the reality of the individual. 
you know, if for me to be a competitive athlete means that I need to have my six pack and every now and then have a hundred likes on Instagram, you know, that's not the true vision, the true vision, or at least my vision of fitness and competition. You know, if I'm thinking of competing, I better have like a clean and jerk at 300 plus snatch, same idea, you know, muscle ups, I should be doing on broken sets of at least 10, you know, and that's where we need to speak of the level. Am I competing or am I playing? You know, am I want to be athlete or I'm an athlete? And what are the standards there to, to define that? Right. And I think that's what creates um, a foundation, like a piece of truth, as opposed to, yeah, yeah, I can take you to the games where the person can't even do a handstand and push up strict or, you know, like has back problems and lingering shoulder problems. And, you know, that's where we need to connect. And once we connect to the end point, we can go back and be like, all right, you know, can you do a strict pull up? You know, if not, if there's pain, once you hang off the bar, then it means we need to go even further back, right? Sometimes we forget the process of, you know, building an individual. And as an ex-gymnast, I've seen the progression. You know, we take kids, I've coached kids that are, where are three and a half, you know, that are walking and, you know, they walk on the beam and they fall and, you know, they learn how to roll and they pick themselves up. And, you know, it's a process where they're discovering, where they're learning. And, you know, now as adults, you know, we've, we've lost that, you know, we, we don't play anymore. Sometimes we haven't ever played, right? We don't know what it means to be upside down. We don't know how to run, how to jump, how to crawl, how to pull. So some people have done it. Some people have, you know, are into the other spectrum where, you know, okay, I want to go to the games. I ask them what's their one rep max snatch and they can even give me, you know, the date that they've done that. Right. So that's where it's, uh, it's so, so I often, I often think that helping somebody be more aware of their reality is extremely important, you know, and they can have a very different perception, you know, than somebody else about what reality looks like. But when you start to put facts onto the table, it does start to bring in a level of realness to what this relationship would look like. You know, so let's say I come to you and I, I have one muscle up, uh, I snatch 205, and I'm saying that I want to go to the CrossFit Games, as an example, this upcoming year. You know, I, I just don't, I don't think that enough people necessarily understand the length of time that it takes to develop that sort of let's just call it expertise in fitness, right? Like to, to compete at the CrossFit games, you need to be an expert in fitness, you know, from a body awareness standpoint, from a strength, from a muscle endurance, da, 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 da. And I think that this fast track idea has cost a lot of people either injury or um, let's just call it despair. I think where they just had a wrong expectation coming in and that leads them to thinking they should be moving faster than is even possible to move. So let me ask you this. You mentioned gymnastics. I'd love to understand uh, your background a little bit that led you into this idea of being able to coach um, high-level athletes. So what, what are your experiences that led you here? Great question. I mean, to me, it started since, since I can remember. You know, I wanted to um, – I saw a movie, Bruce Lee, Game of Death, and uh, that was the – initiator of everything you know like I started reading his books on philosophy on martial art I started you know practicing actually gymnastics that was the closest I could have my dad didn't want us to do any uh, combat sports and you know that was my restriction you could do whatever other than combat sports and that was the closest I could be and uh, my philosophy has always been to understand I want to understand how the body functions how the body moves and how it can help him or help it improve, you know, naturally. You know, I believe we have uh, crazy potential, not only physically, not only mental, not only psychological, you know, when you blend all of those things, you know, I see it in competition over and over again, you could have the most gifted, talented, you know, athlete, but once pressure is in, they lose their focus, they lose their mind, they lose their control, and they, they, they fail, you know? What do you, what do you think leads the better or best athletes to be able to merge kind of that triad that you said so physical emotional mental like what what do you think helps them 
achieve that? Um, from personal experience is the understanding of yourself, you know, like being exposed, you know, knowing what are your weaknesses and being, um, how do you say, courageous enough to uh, expose yourself out there. You know, as a CrossFit competitor, you know, a, a couple of years back, uh, I was the smallest competitor in Canada East, you know, and my philosophy through training, through my daily living was to do everything that was in my control to prepare for the regionals, independently of the outcome. You know, I wanted to be the best version of myself. So if that meant, you know, eight hours of sleep, two of them before midnight, you know, eating, chewing my foods 20, 30 times, you know the drill. So um, all of that things, you know, all of that in place so that when I was into that moment of vulnerability, of failure, of like, you know, uncertainty, I could really, really, really focus on to that and learn, you know, as much as one year I got uh, disqualified on the first event for trying too much, you know, just like this year that many competitors are going to get cut down after the first event. How do you deal with that? You know, are you in peace with the training? Are you in peace with the effort? Will you be in peace after what will happen? You know, do you know if you prepare properly? And what does it mean when you're preparing for a sport that you should be ready for everything, right? Man, that's so well said. And I think that brings us right back to the original question that you answered with. I want them to build understanding and I want to build an understanding in that person. You, I mean... Uh, imagine the difference between somebody who has a deep and realistically based understanding of what they can do, who they are, what peace to them means, you know what I mean? Like how, what does peace even mean, you know, to finish a competition with, but the more that you can help somebody identify that early, the better they can align training and lifestyle, et cetera. So that when they step foot on the floor, it is all about expressing what they've been working on. And that should be certain, right? Like you don't know what's going to happen in a competition, but you can be certain that you prepared effectively for who you are and what you're capable of. I think that that's so, so, so well said. Um, let me shift gears a little bit. I've been really enjoying asking this question to our coaches, but what are you the most interested in in the moment as it relates to fitness? You know, so I'll give you an example. Uh, Will Trujillo talked about motor control. He's super passionate about this idea of motor control. What are you really interested in in the moment that you're investigating? Right now, for me, it's um, that piece of motivation, you know, like trying to get to the source of like, okay, independently of me being a beginner or me being an advanced, because we forget often right now, like our whole world are, like, is the games. Right, for the competitors of the games are like, okay, games, 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 games. And yet it's not over after that. You know, what, what keeps us motivated? What keeps us uh, centered? What keeps us, I don't want to say discipline, because for me, health, fitness, performance, you know, has cycles. Health for sure, you know, like having, like James say, happy, hungry, horny has to be until I die. You know, and then, like, I just had, like, three months ago, I broke my leg uh, doing jujitsu. You know, that brought me another awareness piece into what, you know, being independent, what being functional means. And I think that's where, or I don't think so, I, I know right now that's where my head is in the sense that what truly health means, how do I stay with that? what truly performance means and how can I stay motivated for that? You know, I believe that my human potential, I can still continue developing it under what, you know, definition. And that's for me to, you know, pinpoint what is my definition of um, pushing my boundaries? You know, is it through aerobic capacity? Is it through strength right now? It's through balance. You know, I want to be balanced while I lunch. I want to develop my flexibility of my ankle. That's my personal, um, how do you say, goal. So I can go back to, you know, develop power, you know, either with weightlifting, either jumping, either running, you know, develop strength. I can't squat properly yet. So how do I do that for myself? And how do I stay motivated? You know, doing split squats and goblet squats and Frankenstein squats is boring as hell. 
but you know, it's part of the foundation. It's part of things I need to do. And similar with an athlete, you know, do they understand the steps to get to 15, 20 unbroken muscle ups? You know, do you have a good false grip? Do you understand your own goal? Right. And being connected with that idea and that intention and that um, aspiration, right. That's where I'm, I'm, I'm focusing because independently of the movement, you know, you, once they understand that, once you understand their most important aspiration or drive or what's, you know, letting that fire, you know, in their asses to get up in the morning and go for a run or, you know, prepare their breakfast and sit down and have breakfast or, you know, sh shut it down earlier, you know, cancel parties so that you can rest and, you know, invest your money into a massage because your ultimate goal is to the expression of, your own potential that day of the competition and you know even if it rains or shines or whatever you know that that moment present 100 percent, and you know you go for it so gosh that just makes me think about when you said that there's sort of this this circular or spring-like life cycle where everybody's constantly learning what stage of development that they're in. And so for you right now, coming off of a broken leg, you're in sort of a foundational, you know, side of your development. But let's not forget, you on this call alone, you've talked about high level gymnast, high level CrossFitter, high level jujitsu. You know, so it's like you've seen some pretty high level sport in your day. But what you made me think about is the concept of who you are. And I think that a lot of people when they feel inauthentic or like a phony, meaning I'm trying to get to the CrossFit Games, but I'm this guy over here. It's, it's that intersection or that bridge between the two, right? Like you have to be the CrossFit Games athlete in order to make the CrossFit Games. You can't just expect that that bridge is going to be crossed without you making a conscious decision in your mind of, I'm going to be the one to cross it right now so that I build the right habits and actions on a daily basis to earn the right. You got it. Um, and I, gosh, that was well said. I appreciate you going through that. I think so many people can think about that. And then let's, let's go one stage farther. What happens when competition isn't the number one goal? You know, who are you then? And I think a lot of high level athletes struggle. I mean, let's just use, you know, the moon landing, right? It's like, you're an, a you're an astronaut that landed on the moon. It's like, what the hell is next? Right. And so, but that's such an interesting concept of if you can take everything that you've learned in this thing called life experience, you can always move higher. It's just different. And the perspective and the perception changes on what you're building next. And I think that, um, gosh, it goes right back to what you said initially. I want to understand the person, but as a coach, and then particularly as a client or an athlete, you always have to ask yourself who you are and you always have to understand where you are in this whole life cycle. Gosh, that was well said. You know, uh, something sorry, if, if, yeah, go for it. something that helps me a lot for that particular moment in time, when I was preparing for the regionals, every single time there was one day of like a three day test that James is like trying to punch me in the face and, you know, kill you. Like basically the, the, how do you say simulations for the regionals were harder than the regionals. But, the moment that I was in pain, the moment I wanted to give up, I would go back to my question, which is, why am I doing this? And do I have somewhere else to be? You know, do I have somewhere else better where I can invest my energy, where I can invest my time to be? And if my answer was no, then I would shut up and I would go even faster. I would grind. I would, you know, visualize that competition, you know, and that's true for anything in life. You know, now that I have my uh, gym, I, you know, accounting part of it is the most difficult for me. You know, I have a bit of dyslexia. So counting numbers and, you know, like making mistakes go back and I'm like, why am I doing this? And it goes back to the same thing, you know, having a space where people can express themselves freely. You know, it's not everybody that has the know-how. And I believe that that's where I'm coming from, you know, from gymnastics to I actually did rock climbing to martial arts from martial arts, discovering CrossFit as a complement to get fit, right, for my sport, which was martial arts. Then as the sport was developing because of my background of gymnast, um, I discovered that I, I could be competitive 
And that's where James came into my face and told me that I would never be a CrossFit athlete because I was too small, right? And then that's when I made the decision to go like, all right, I don't care for me being small, but I still can discover how far I can push this. And I still, up to today, keep doing that. And that helps me, you know, to, you know, who likes to do split squats for 15 repetitions at three seconds down? No one. <laughs> No one likes that. But yet now my goal is to go back to the level I was, not only for competing for CrossFit, but more for my own independence. You know, I saw what it means to be vulnerable. I saw what it means to be depending on other individuals. And not that it's wrong. It doesn't make me a weaker person or, a, you know, a bad person. But, you know, that was my or is one of my biggest fears, you know, to be depending on someone. To be in French is a fardeau. Mm. Fardeau means a uh, burden. Being a burden for someone, for individuals, you know, not being able to carry my weight. Actually, I want to be the guy that, you know, people like to, to pick because I'll be doing my homework. I'll be an asset. I'll be, you know, someone that you can rely on, someone you count on. And, you know, like if that's my way of expressing my health, if that's my way of expressing my fitness levels, you know, I'll, I'll focus on that. You know, in today's world, what does it mean? You know, that's where we can talk about what health means, what functional means, what competition means. And, you know, that's where we can talk about what's your lifestyle, you know, what's your training schedule like, you know, when do you eat, how much do you eat, you know, the quality of the nutrients, calorie ins, you know, calorie outs. I don't really like that. It's more like, you know, understanding the process that you need to feed your body, you need to feed it good things so that it can give you the energy for what's your purpose what's your aspiration what's your inner fire what's your inner flame you know and that goes for athletes that's good for beginners that goes for you know the whole spectrum but now let's define who are you right let me guide you you know let me understand let's have this dialogue let's have this open safe space to be like all right fine you didn't have the tools to begin with cool Let's give you the tools. Are you ready to make the changes? Yes, no. How many changes can you make in a week, in a month, in a year, right? Do you really, really, really want to good look naked? Why? You know, what are the changes you're going to make for that? You know, are you ready to go to bed early? Are you ready to, you know, do your three, four times trainings a week, right? And that's where we can move forward. You know, sometimes we think that, I need to train hard and I need to push every day and we forget about the starting point. And I believe that's why so many people fail at, you know, maintaining and getting results. You know, they're not well uh, guided, I would say. And even then they're not aware of their starting point or what they, they need or not need to do. Right? Well said, sir. Uh, we got to call it there. Unfortunately, I think, you know, as with all of our coaches, I think we could do this forever. So I think we're going to have to do a lot more of these, but, I really appreciate you jumping on and talking to us about that. I think people are going to take a lot of great stuff from this. So I appreciate it, Mazar. Awesome. You're welcome. Anytime.